Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Alex Bourne and I am from Rockwell Guitar School in Shoreview, Minnesota. Uh, RockwellGuitarSchool.com is our website and this is another Theory Thursday lesson where we talk about music theory. Today we are talking about um, a couple new inversions or more information about inversions. Uh, you will need to have done the previous 69 lessons um, in order to understand this one. So, um, so get the book and uh, jump into it. All right, let's get started. So, uh, let's see what it says. The movement from one chord to the next in the 16251 progression, which we talked about in lesson 69, can be made to sound smoother by using inversions. So if you remember, we used all root position um, chord inversions uh, in the last lesson about the one six two five one progression. Now <clears throat> we are going to use different inversions in order to minimize the movement of of each voice uh, in each chord um, from one chord to the next. Okay, so voice meaning each each note in the chord. If you consider like so, here we have like maybe a four person choir. Okay. Four-person choir. Um, let's say two people are singing this one, and then one person singing that, one person singing that. All right. Now, when they go from chord, when they're singing from chord to chord, uh, it makes it easier for them um, to not move as much. So you see, they can keep this note here, the E, between these two chords. All right. Um, consequently, it also makes it. E uh, a little bit more pleasant sounding and smoother sounding to the ear. Um, if you have some piano skills, try plucking these chords out on the piano. Um, and uh, furthermore, uh, you can also separate these individual into individual lines, like individual melodies. And when when each of these individual melodies sounds pleasant, then uh, it, it creates a really nice effect from chord to chord. So, understanding that might come a little bit more with experience, but, you know, here's your first, first exposure to that, uh, and I strongly suggest you try to find these notes on the piano. Um, you know, play the chords as written here, and then single, single out each, uh, each melody in here, and listen to the way that melody is moving, you know, in the context of the chords. All right, um, enough about that. When the Roman numerals are used, the first inversion is indicated with the number. The second inversion with the number is 6, 4. Right. When the chord symbols are used, the first inversion is indicated with the letter name of the chord first, followed by a diagonal line and the letter name of the bass note. For example, G chord in first inversion is G over B. That's how you'd say that, not G slash B, not an option of G or B. Uh, the first inversion of the dominant seventh chord is called, uh, is indicated as a five, six over five. Okay, um, these inversion indicators uh, are kind of a very classical practice. Um, it's good to know how to use them, but you know I wouldn't be too stressed about you know understanding them. But for you who are more contemporary musicians, the slash chords are a must a must understand a must know so um, especially guitar players or piano players so make sure you understand that um, let's look at these activities here write the one six two five one progression in the key of F using smooth voice leading this practice up here that I was describing of you know, uh, minimal movement from one note to the next. That is also called smooth voice leading. Indicate the chord names and the inversions used. Okay, so just you know, record, uh, record your thought process here, and uh, indicate the chords and the inversions using this system here. Um, all right. Uh, watch your bass clefs. Watch all your clefs uh, and watch your key signatures. So here, one six two five one in the key of G, 
Use smooth voice leading. Indicate chord names and inversions. 16251 in the key of B flat using smooth voice leading. Indicate the chord names and the inversions used. So if you if you do the key signature over here, you won't have to do any uh, accidentals over here in the chords uh, because that will all be taken care of in the um, in the key signature, and these are all diatonic chords. Okay, one is always major, six is always minor, two is always minor, five is always dominant seven, and one is major again. Write the one six two five one progression in the key of D using smooth voice leading. Watch your key signatures, watch your clefs. Indicate the chord names and the inversions used. Um, okay, let's see if we can maybe do one of these. Um, so I can demonstrate it. Note flight. And... It kind of picked the easy keys here. Okay, um, I will do, I have an idea, I'll do G, um, the key of G in treble clef. Okay, so here we go, uh, key signature is going to be G, okay, um, let's see. The entire thing wants to be G. Okay, cool. Um, now, so here will be the G chord. One. Okay, G chord. That's the one chord. Uh, let me do the. Okay, sixth chord is going to be E minor, so that's E, G, and B. So guess what? I can keep the G, I can keep the B, all I need is an E. So let me do it here. I'm going to do G, and then, oops, B. Okay. All right, smooth voice leading, minimal movement. I kept these two notes the same and just moved this one up, and I still have the chord I need. So one, six, now I need a two chord that's gonna be A minor, right? Uh, what am I gonna do here? A, C, and E is what I'm looking for. Let's see. One, six, two. Does that work? Let's see. Yeah. Minimal movement. Okay. One, six, two, five. Now I need uh, a D chord, D, F sharp, A, and C. I want this to be. Let's see, uh, I have an A already, I have a C, I have C, do I want to do that? I can do an F sharp up here, I can do an F sharp up here. I'm going to do up there, uh, now I need a D. Yeah, not the best, but okay. Smooth voice leading. Um, okay, one, six, two, five. 
Tom Salmon. One. Go back to that one. I could even go up here. Let me erase this one. So this is this is a little bit more interesting, I guess. Um, yeah. So smooth voice leading got a one six two five one, right? Q G. Um, this would be. First inversion, root position. This would be what? Uh, second inversion. Let's see. Yeah, second inversion, and then first inversion. Okay, so yeah, that's what you got to do. All right, any questions, hit me up in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching. This has been Theory Thursday, Rockwell Guitar School. Signing out.